In Great Britain, undertaking is when you're on a dual carriageway and you overtake on the left side. So for example here, you could say that I'm undertaking the vehicles on my right because I'm passing them on their left. In Great Britain, undertaking isn't strictly illegal, but it can be unsafe, it can land you with a fine and points in your license, and even have you being sent to court. I'll go into more detail soon, but firstly, I wanna clarify exactly what a dual carriageway is, because many people get this wrong. A dual carriageway is a road with a central reservation separating the two carriageways. At the moment we have grass, usually you'd have a barrier. Where many people go wrong is they believe a dual carriageway means two lanes traveling in the same direction. But unless there is a central reservation, that would be a single carriageway. Dual carriageway means two carriageways. It doesn't mean two lanes. Even if there was one lane on this carriageway, it would still be a dual carriageway because there's one carriageway on this side of the central reservation where I'm driving, and there's another carriageway on the other side of the central reservation. At the moment, I'm on a road that has two lanes traveling in my direction and one lane traveling in the other direction. This is still a single carriageway. There is no central reservation. The same is true after this roundabout. After this roundabout, both sides of the road has two lanes, as you'll see in a moment. And here we are, both sides of the road has two lanes, but there's no central reservation. So this is a single carriageway. And therefore me passing this Mini is not considered undertaking. Another error I often come across is that dual carriageways have two lanes on each side and motorways have three lanes on each side. But that's not true. A good example is the M11. Most of it is only two lanes on each side. The difference between dual carriageways and motorways is something I need to explain in a different video. Before the legal part can make sense, I need to explain why undertaking can be unsafe. In Great Britain, we drive on the right-hand side of the car. We can see most of the lane to the right of us in the door mirror, and it's easy to look over our right shoulder to see what the door mirror is missing. I will leave a link to a video about mirrors and blind spots on screen. When it comes to checking the left side, we still have a door mirror to see most of the lane to the left of us, but it's much harder to see the areas the mirror is missing due to the seats and the pillars. And when there are passengers, they restrict our view even more. And if you're driving a van, forget it. You won't even have this window. So we have to look at the blind spot mirrors. Let's look at the blue car in lane one. The yellow area represents the view from the blue car's mirrors. The black car in lane two is easy to see, but the green car in lane three, well, that's hidden in the blind spot. However, as I've just explained, it's easy for the blue car to check the right blind spot to see the green car and prevent this from happening. Now the blue car is in lane three and the green car is in the blind spot, but on the left, the side that's hard to see. It's more likely for a passing vehicle to be hidden on the left side and therefore it's more likely for this to happen. It shouldn't happen, but if passing on the left was normal, it would likely happen more often and collisions on high speed roads would increase as a result. This is one reason it's less safe to pass on the left. You may be thinking, Surely the green car can see the blue car and abort the lane change, and you are right, yet it still happens. Also, some drivers change lane quickly, meaning if they have missed something, there is no time to abort, or aborting is so sudden and panicked that it leads to the car sliding out of control and possibly colliding with something or multiple things. This is why it's important to change lanes slowly, because if you do miss something, at least that something has time to react safely. A less obvious way that passing on the left can cause danger is vehicles getting trapped on the motorway, and this can encourage dangerous lane changing. Also, it's important not to trap people on the carriageway in case they break down or get a flat tire. They need to be able to go left to leave the carriageway. Stopping here is not safe. Now you understand how it can be unsafe to undertake, it makes more sense how you can get into trouble 
if you do it. And that's because your responsibility as a driver is not only to be legal. You must be legal as well, but also you need to be safe. And if your driving is considered to be unsafe, you can be charged with either careless driving, which includes driving without reasonable consideration for other road users, or dangerous driving. With careless driving, you can get a fixed penalty, a set number of points and a fine, or you could go to court. So that's how, even though undertaking isn't illegal in itself, you can get points in your license and a fine or be sent to court for doing so. Here is an example of where many think it's okay to undertake, but it's actually one of the worst places you can do it. We have a short broken line which marks the edge of the carriageway. As the line signifies the edge of the carriageway, some people say it's okay to undertake because technically we are on a different road to the two lanes on our right. But this is one of the least safe places to undertake as this lane is an exit lane and vehicles in the lanes to the right of me are more likely going to be trying to enter my lane. Some may do it suddenly, and it actually happens often here when they realize a bit late that this is their exit lane. Also, look at how this lorry blocks your view of this vehicle. If I was to pass this lorry on the left, as the hidden vehicle sees this sign, which then makes them realize they need the left lane so they dart quickly into my lane to avoid missing their exit that may put us on a collision course especially if i was to pass the lorry quickly be even more careful when passing on the left if you are approaching an exit and expect vehicles to be trying to move in front of you some more safely than others here is another example of where you also need to be careful because vehicles are going to be changing lane as they see these signs. However, you often need to undertake here because the vehicles on the right are usually slowing down as they approach their traffic lights. It does get safer as the road widens and you have more space from the vehicles to your right. Also, they're less likely to dart across these hatch markings. It still happens though, so be aware. Sometimes undertaking is safe or even preferred. However, do you want to go to court to prove that you undertook safely? That's going to be a lot of time and stress. So in my opinion, if in doubt, it's probably best not to undertake. However, there is a rule in the highway code, rule 268, which states when you can pass on the left. It says, in congested conditions where adjacent lanes of traffic are moving at similar speeds, traffic in left-hand lanes may sometimes be moving faster than traffic to the right. In these conditions, you may keep up with the traffic in your lane, even if this means passing traffic in the lane to your right. So if your lane is going faster than the traffic in the right, because the traffic in the right is slowing down, it's congested, you can keep up with the traffic in your lane. But it does also state in this rule, that do not weave in and out of lanes to overtake. And at the beginning of the rule, it says, do not overtake on the left or move to a lane on your left to overtake. So what it's saying there is that you shouldn't move to the left lane to pass traffic, to get further up the road and get ahead of traffic. And neither should you move from left to right, changing lanes to get ahead of traffic. You should only undertake if you're in your lane and your lane happens to be going faster than the lane on your right because it's congested and therefore they're slowing down. You must stay within the speed limit though. There is a flaw in the highway code though, and that's because that rule I've just explained, rule 268, refers to motorways. So on motorways, it's directly saying that if traffic to your right slows down and it's congested, you may keep up with traffic in your lane, even though that means passing traffic to your right. But it doesn't say that directly about dual carriageways. Rule 137 refers to dual carriageways and that states, on a two lane dual carriageway, you should stay in the left hand lane, use the right hand lane for overtaking or turning right. After overtaking, move back to the left hand lane when it is safe to do so. It doesn't say there that you can keep up with traffic in your lane if traffic to the right slows down. It does state in the motorway section of the highway code, a number of the rules for motorways also apply to other high-speed roads. 
The highway code doesn't specify that rule 268 also applies to dual carriageways that are not motorways. But it is normal if you're driving on a dual carriageway that's not a motorway to keep up with traffic in your lane, even if that means passing traffic to the right of you when it's congested. It's acceptable on the driving test and it's what I do. However, if you are passing vehicles on your right and one of those vehicles signals to move back to the left, let them back. They may need to take their exit. Some drivers may be a bit irrational when they're trying to take the exit. They don't wanna go past it, so they may get dangerous. But more important than that, they may have a breakdown. They may have a flat tire. They may need to get back to the left to get off the road. And if there is one, to the hard shoulder try to avoid trapping cars on the right when they need to get back to the left. If they end up stopping in the right lane because of a breakdown, now that's a dangerous situation. Many people get frustrated when they see a driver hogging the middle lane or even the right lane, and they're not overtaking, they're just staying there. That is a problem, but at worst, it's careless. If you were to drive close up behind them, or undertake them while staying close to them and pull directly in front of them, you're now being dangerous and that's a lot worse. Trying to correct a problem with a bigger problem is not wise. And it's not smart to think it's okay to do something that's bad and put people in danger just because somebody else is doing something that's bad, especially if what they're doing is less bad than what you're doing. If I come up behind a car and they're hogging a lane, I don't drive right up behind them and try to intimidate them. I wait a moment, give them a chance to notice me, and I think, are they hogging that lane? Or are they just trying to keep a safe distance from the car in front? Are they actually passing someone? I'm not gonna jump to conclusions quickly. If I think they really are, they're just staying there, I may flash the lights a couple of times, not in an intimidating or distracting way and not whilst drafting close up behind them. That's what flashing the lights is for. It's a visual version of the horn. I'm here, just getting their attention, wake them up. Hopefully they notice, hopefully they move over. But trying to deal with a problem on the road by being dangerous and aggressive is not acceptable. The overall goal when you're driving is to be safe and you also need to be legal. If you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're looking for car insurance, check out the links to Collingwood and Confused in the description. If you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on somebody else's car, then Collingwood are there for you because you can do so without affecting the owner's policy, and that takes away a big stress from the owner of that car. Via the link at the moment, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. If you want to insure your own car, I recommend checking out the link to confused.com because you fill out one quote form and get loads of quotes back from loads of different insurers and you can compare easily who's cheapest. Also, you can change different things like windscreen cover and legal cover easily to compare prices. And you can change your car on that quote without having to do the whole quote again, which is an easy way to compare how much it costs to insure different cars. Using the link doesn't cost you anything, but it does support the channel, so thank you very much. Subscribe to get my future videos, and until the next one, cheerio.